boom there you are here <laughs> you got to be exhausted from doing these things no way dude no oh i'm like you know i'm like a dog if you run it outside for a while it just gets more energy well you're the kind of guy who always needs to be doing something and with covid i guess you had to do something so is this book the result of that yeah i got sick of making meatballs uh and i decided i was gonna sit down and kind of write about these crazy experiences i've had but it actually started with this instagram page called dave's true stories and i'd never had an instagram page so i thought oh this would be fun and rather than like just take pictures and stuff like that i i started writing these short stories not knowing how long the pandemic was going to last i thought oh this this will buy my time until the music comes back the band gets back together and we start doing more shows but then when i realized like oh this is we're gonna be here a while maybe I should write a book. And that's when I, that, that was really, that was really the inspiration was not only am I creatively restless, but I finally had the time to write. I'd considered it before, but I was, I've always been too busy. And so having all of this time to write, uh, I just went for it. Okay. Don't take this the wrong way for a high school dropout. You're a pretty good writer. <laughs> Thanks man. Well, you know, to my parents so my mother was a high school public uh, public high school english teacher and she taught creative writing and public speaking and she was a debate coach so brilliant writer brilliant woman my father was a republican um speech writer on capitol hill he was a pr guy he was a journalist brilliant dude brilliant writer so it was like somewhere in my dna zipper i think but you know having not been formally trained the most important thing to me was that it was written in my voice so as you're reading it it really should read like i'm just sitting next to you at a bar telling you these stories um and that was like that gave me this freedom where i thought all right you know i'm not going for a pulitzer prize here i just want people to like hear these stories and hopefully um it'll sound like me telling it to them but i appreciate it it's very nice it's uh the 30th anniversary of nevermind can you believe it's been that long no it feels weird it does. The fact that this record is, is still relevant 30 years later is just, just amazing. And the Foo Fighters have been, what, 26 years now, right? Long time, yeah. What's, what's left to do? I mean, you hit the jackpot twice. Well, you know, I'll tell you, with, with Nevermind, um, you know, I don't play Nirvana records in my house. I have three kids. I have a 15-year-old, 12-year-old, and a 7-year-old. And they know I was in the band and stuff. Um, but th they connect to that music the same way 12 or 15 year olds did when the album just came out. It's something about the music. And I think it has something to do with the raw simplicity of it. I think the, th the thing with Nevermind is it's very emotionally accessible and it's a very simple record. I was the first person to place uh, Teen Spirit on the radio in Canada. Thank you. It was 1138 on the morning of the 27th of August, 1991. And a guy from the record company walked in and said, put this on next. Okay, fine, who is this? Uh, whatever, put it on. And within 30 seconds, the phones blew up. Who is this? What's this, what, what is this all about? I was also DJing at a club. And by the end of the following week, the, the, CD, the CD single still hadn't come out yet. But by the end of the following week, when we put it on in the club, they, they knew all the words. After that, it was just the rocket ship ride. And it was, it was just amazing. I'll never forget. I'm glad I was part of it. What do you think would have happened to Nirvana had things not turned out the way they did? I mean, that's the biggest what if. Who's to, who's to say? Who knows? I, I think that, you know, we were a musical bunch. And whether we were doing it together as Nirvana or um, little things outside of that, there would always have been music, probably in different forms. Um, you know, Kurt was incredibly prolific. When we were writing the songs to go down to record Nevermind, I mean, there were so many ideas that we just left on like these cassettes we would record on a boom box in the, in the barn where we rehearsed. So, um, you know, there was no shortage of music, that's for sure. 